You're listening to Public Sector Partnerships, an in-time tech podcast. We love the support and thank you for listening. Hello and welcome to our new podcast, Public Sector Partnerships. I'm your host, Aliyah Erickson. Today we are talking about why you would want to work in the public sector. I'm joined by Jeet Kumar, Dan Puga, and Kevin Nielsen. So with me, I have all sorts of people from End Time Tech. And for this episode, we're focused on why End Time Tech works in the public sector to begin with and why companies would want to work in the public sector. So to start out with, let's discuss that. Why does End Time Tech work in the public sector? Yeah, and it's a great question, Alia. I think for us, we take immense responsibility towards the community that we live in. And if you look at public sector in general, they serve public. And if we are a technology company, in public sector, there are two challenges, aging technology and aging population. Um, People tend to go towards private sector when you talk about technology. People get Google and Microsoft and Apple and that's the world people, the frass or the college graduates tend to go to those kind of companies rather than going to a public sector or I want to work for this county or for a state. And what we have found at In Time Tech, we want to create abundance. So our goal and commitment towards creating abundance to help the communities and public sector is a important part of the community. So we are coming along. Uh, Many projects we are doing for public sector. The governor was here at our uh, office and he um, signed the biggest tax cut in Idaho because he knows the kind of company we are, what we stand for, what we're creating here. And so for us, providing the -the state-of-the-art technology solutions and making sure that our technology creating possibility for all the public sector who serves the public. And then also making sure the the workforce um, is also available, the capacity and capabilities. Both are available through in-time tax, and that's why we work for, with public sector. Yeah, I would, I would add to that. Um, G definitely talked about the, um, there's an aging workforce, and it's really hard to find talent. At the same time, there's an aging technology, lots of legacy systems um, that exist that are not secure, so they're, they are exposed to cybersecurity threats. Um, their data is inaccessible, so they have lots of data silos that are out spread around and they don't have a lot of access to the data that would help uh, with citizens. And so um, coming alongside to help get these things into the cloud, get them on modern technology, can make a meaningful difference also in just keeping the cost down and the service high for citizens. And I would add that, that one of the, the things I see as we serve in the public sector is the impact that it has on the people of Idaho and the people of, of our communities that we live in. And having a direct impact, for example, in, in one of the areas we work uh, is, is with a system that benefits uh, early childhood care and education. And, and not just the, the kids and the families that are part of that, but also the people who are working in that sector. Everything from education and career development and, and things like that. And it's, it's a real uh, grassroots, rubber meets the road type of exercise. And it takes on a lot of meaning for, for us as a company and for the, our employees as they individually get to see the impact that they have in our community. And Kevin, you, you serve um, um, in, uh, at the Star. Yeah. Can you share a little bit about that also? Yeah, so I, I'm a city councilman for the city of Star, Idaho. Hmm. And I've, I've been doing that for about six and a half years. And so public sector is, is near and dear to my heart for sure. And, and really the importance of, of community service and community involvement is, is top of mind for me. And as like you have a dual role, right? As an employee of InTime Tech and now you are director of engineering. But when you are on that side, like um, when you are in the council and put that hat, do you see some of these things which Dan and I talked about, uh, aging, uh, a- aging workforce and aging, aging technology? You know, I, I do get a glimpse into that, although I have to say the city of Star was created in 1997. So yeah. maybe, maybe our technology isn't quite as old. But yeah, we do participate in some of the public systems and, and you know, we purchase on public uh, purchasing agreements and things like that. And the technologies that are out there are definitely, I mean, you've represented it very well. Yeah. Um, we are dealing with an aging um, technology base for sure. 
Uh, as far as uh, an aging population, you know, those demands on, on cities and counties and services that are provided by our public organizations are on the rise big time. Yeah. And being able to deliver those in a cost-effective way and, and really also comply with a lot of regulations like privacy regulations and HIPAA regulations, the systems aren't, weren't necessarily des- designed for that to begin with. And so updating just for regulatory means are, is required. Oh, totally. And I think you can see... We work with the city of Boise, we work with the Industrial Commission, and you talk about child care um, and um, all the things which we are doing in those areas. It was completely pen and paper. Then if you want, like you can see Industrial yeah. Commission side, yeah, it's a major. It's a very paper intensive workflow. I mean, it just, a lot of people have to touch lots of pieces of paper. And you can imagine if, if you're submitting documents through a letter, and then you have no way of knowing did somebody get it, and then they send a response that takes a lot of time versus a a digitized process where I can go online, fill out an application, submit, I get an email that says, yeah, we got your submission. Within days, you can get something back, and that whole interface now um, creates uh, a much better experience for serving the citizens as well as for the employees of the state of Idaho. Uh, And I think we've done that with a lot of things. As Kevin was talking about, the... the, um, the AEYC application um, called RISE. I mean, one of the things that through the pandemic that it was able to do was actually do wage enhancement grants for folks who had child care centers. Mm-hmm. And, and it was because they had a centralized place where they had all the child care providers' uh, salary data. And they could apply for grants and, and people can apply for subsidies. And so as funds came from the federal government to the state government, they actually had a method to, to track and distribute those funds that really kept people afloat during the pandemic as an example. Had that been pen and paper, I don't know if the process could have worked. You know, one last thing I'd like to mm-hmm. highlight there. I, I mentioned briefly that the city of Star purchases things on a state you know, purchasing agreement. And one of the things that InTime Tech can help with is we develop software for one sector of government. It can be applicable in other sectors. And, and those sectors can take advantage of that without having to duplicate the work. In the private sector, everybody competes. Yeah. And, and if, if I have a technology, you know, you might have to go develop a competing technology. And in government, we don't want that. We want to optimize and, yeah. and minimize those costs. And so developed in one place, you know, the application Dan was just talking about is used here in Idaho. And the state of South Dakota just yeah. reached out to us having seen what Idaho is doing and said, we want to do something similar. And so we can help benefit the people of South Dakota also without yeah. a whole lot of additional investment. Within, within the state of Idaho, different agencies can leverage right. and then across the states yeah. from here to South Dakota and they, they get to know a few things. So that's, that, those are the reasons earlier why we think uh, public sector is such an um, important domain uh, sector for us as a company. Yeah. All right. And speaking of which, how did InTime Tech get started working in the public sector? Well, Dan, you, yeah, you want to talk sure. about that? Yeah, for sure. One of the fun things about being in Idaho is it's fairly small and it's easy to meet people. And it started off with, with one of our folks, Paul Remus, meeting a person he knew at the coffee shop and they were talking about what they did. He's like, oh man, we have all this spreadsheets and databases, access databases that are helping manage this whole process for childcare providers. And um, boy, if we had a, sis, a single integrated system, it would make a big difference. And so that started about six years ago. And that's how we got involved with, uh, with the RISE application that Kevin was talking about. And then through that, we got to uh, meet some folks that work for IT services, uh, Jeff Week and a few other folks, and to share with them, we're in Idaho for Idaho, and it, it, it takes a long time to, for the right kinds of opportunities to come. But through that connection, there was an um, in, invitation to negotiate that was going out, and we, we got to meet with the um, Idaho Industrial Commission folks, and we participated in that whole invitation to negotiate and won that contract. and. Through that, we began to see what's really possible if you apply technology to um, and make it available to public sector agencies, the real meaningful impact it can have. And I would say that's mm-hmm. that's what, what really got us started down that path. And I think if you think, Aliyah, I think those are some of the initial opportunities that either knock on our door or we really found a way to get involved in those application development. But more and more, what I see, what we stand for as a company, and creating abundance is our possibility. 
is that people are getting to know about us more now. And through that process, we are in Idaho. And there's so much need of technology and solutions. Uh, cybersecurity is a big deal right now in the state. And there's so much funds are coming into the state. And we are one of the experts in that area. We have helped so many private sector companies who are like a billions of dollars company on an e-commerce platform. We do their vulnerability testing, pen testing, all of that. And now we are taking all of that knowledge and bringing that all of that knowledge to our public sector partners. So surely we got to know some of them, but now it's like a snowball. Yeah. It's just more we are rolling, more it is picking up. And that's how we are getting to know about public sector more so, and they, they are also getting to know us uh, more so. All right, and what do you find most rewarding about public sector work? Kevin will talk because he starts quite a bit apart. <laughs> so go for it. You know, I've kind of already touched on some of those things. You know, it's, it's that direct impact that that we have um, for for the communities that we live in. By the way, that's why why you ran for the office. That, also that's too. exactly right. So, um, you know, being fully invested not just in, in the community that we live in, but but tangibly with with our neighbors and with our with our own children. Um, you know, in, in the particular. Uh, you know, sector we're working with that early childhood development. Um, my own children went through uh, early childhood education in centers that are part of the state's uh, early childhood program. And so um, I've seen firsthand the impact that that can have. And, and really, there's a lot of need out there in our communities. And so, you know, for, for me, that, that's a really rewarding part to just have that hands-on personal impact. And when I hear G talk about you know what it, what it's like for us to get started in working in the public sector, taking our vision of creating abundance and reaching out to, you know, our, our goal is to touch, move, and inspire everyone that we come in contact with, and when we can do that in a public sector, um, you know, it's people are people, whether it's government or, or private industry, um, but doing that in the public sector, I, I think, is especially yeah. meaningful because of the um, the way that the the public money and funds are being used in a company like End Time Tech, who's really, you know, focused on people first. Yeah, we are the people first. And I, Alia, I will. I'll answer this question on the opposite. Like, what happens if we don't serve and if we don't do the impact of it? And I'll give an example of it. Software, is software. And sometimes there are glitches. There are some challenges. And one day. One of the applications which are, that we have been talking about, RISE application, had a defect. And because of that, the child care provider was not able to generate its license. Mm. And it was one off uh, challenge and we fixed it, but I want to share the impact of it. Because of that, the provider was not able to support the kids that day. And the kids had to send back to home. Now their parents are now there, like they have gone to work. And now you can imagine what is the profound and more uh, inspiring and satisfying is that what we do touches human beings, touches family. Um, so much and so that if we don't do what we do, the people cannot have a peaceful life at home. And that is the most, satisfaction, uh, most satisfying and most inspiring to us. So it is quite aligned with creating abundance for us. Um, that how we touch human beings with, with the technology that we know, the technology that we can create, the technology that we serve human, human beings and citizens, we talked about. So I want to share the most satisfying thing for us in, in public sector domain, that what we do, what we do does matter. And people can do their job. Human beings cannot uh, have a peaceful and, and joyful and happy life if we don't deliver what we need to deliver. Yeah. I would add one last one. Mm -hmm. um, we also built a mobile application for IDLA, which they do digital yeah, beautiful uh, learning study. platforms. And so, um, so for rural areas that don't have access to teachers to teach specific kinds of classes, these, these kids take classes um, through this digital learning. And one of the challenges was if they don't have good internet, how do they take them? So they can't use their laptops and they don't have good internet access. And so we built an application for them um, that allows them to, to take these classes on their mobile devices that have you know 
4G, 5G, LTE service. So they have internet access on the phone itself, and they're using that now for taking classes that were not available to them at all uh, yeah. before we were able to uh, make them mobile friendly. Yeah, and I, this is fascinating how much, how the, 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 the impact of it is so beyond human beings' imagination. One of the examples, um, we did the POC, a proof of concept, where the kids who don't have food, for example, the, the schools serve food Monday to Friday, but they don't have a way uh, on Saturday, Sunday, or during the pandemic, they were not coming to um, school. They were not able to get food. And we did this proof of concept where there was debit cards were issued to them, where the money can be loaded. They can buy food somewhere else. And there was a Department of Health and Welfare's initiative, uh, which government has taken. And we were able to participate uh, for those young kids, um, having a way for them to have food, uh, having a lunch and breakfast and dinner. It's just those are the things which got us going as a company. Yeah. And if I could add just yeah. one, one other thing is, as you guys are sharing, I was thinking about how committed our partners at the state and, and government yeah. level Pure. are. And Absolutely. a lot of what we see about government, we see on TV or, or read in the newspaper here on the radio when it's you know politically motivated and things like that. And and this this is not at all that that type of experience. This is where we see the actions that our legislatures take to fund certain programs and initiatives. And as we work with the people who are responsible for um, for spending that money and for providing those programs, those people are really involved to to make a difference in other people's lives yeah deeply passionate, deeply passionate and very about. committed yeah. people very committed and very conscientious yeah, about very what conscientious. they're doing with the public funds and it's really rewarding to see that side of government yeah. it's wonderful yeah. yeah definitely definitely all right and what would you recommend to companies thinking about working in the public sector um i think for me if anyone asks how how do you serve public sector? I think you need to listen to them. They, you just need to understand they are probably not as good as you might be in your own arena, um, but they need help. And you cannot help someone until you understand the problem first. So I would say first you need to listen and learn how public sector works. Um, in the lack of this, you're, you're gonna come and say, it's my show. Oh, let me come and do a few things for you but how you are going to do until you understand the challenges and problem. So that's number one. You must listen to employees at public, like at the government agencies, at Kevin talk, talked about, they're very committed people, both in legis legislatures who create the policy matters and provide money, but the employees of various agencies, they're extremely passionate and committed human beings. And, and seeing that you listen to them, allow them to know that you are there for them. Along with that, Bring your expertise. Make sure that you have few things that you can offer and have a more of a, um, expand the whole portfolio um, because what they do is absolutely critical. But along with that, you can bring the state of art. We, are talk, we have been talking a lot in our company, low code, no code, where in a very few lines of codes, you can provide a solution. Um, so for me, I think listening, and making sure that you really become a partner for the, those those people and provide the best possible solutions instead of the art solutions in a quick fashion. Um, those are some of the uh, insights and suggestions and recommendations I can give it to people who want to work with public sector. Yeah, for me, I would I would say take a hard look at why you want to work with public sector because um, for us, we definitely want to make a contribution, right? And it, it takes a lot of patience. You gotta discover contracting vehicles, you gotta make relationships, and really you have to be out to make a difference, really. Otherwise, um, you're gonna waste people's time, their money, uh, all those things. So I, for me personally, it's like, be clear about why you wanna serve the public sector, and we're clear. It's, mm -hmm. how, it's to make a contribution, to make a difference. All right, and Kevin, I don't know, we're about to the end of our time. I don't know if you have anything you wanted to add to that. I don't think I can add anything to that. Those, yeah. those were perfect answers. And I'm glad, I think, what we are talking, if you think about, it, for, as a, for us as a company, we want to make sure that we are not taking any of the public sector agency for a ride, right? Listening, learning, understanding, providing the best possible solution, but having a patience. 
which Dan talked about. And I'm sure on the other side, Kevin, you must have also experienced because public sector moves a little slower and private sector say, let's go. But if we can match and meet their expectation, um, both the speed and also scope, it'll go a long way. All right. Well, thank you to everyone for watching and listening. And thank you to G Dan and Kevin for taking some time and sitting down with me. And thank you for the thank opportunity. You, yeah. 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 Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Alia. Be sure to visit our website and check out our other episodes at intimetech.com. That is I-N-T-I-M-E-T-E-C dot com. Thanks again for listening.